What's up, folks? Welcome back to the Twins Podcast. It's your favorite doctor's favorite doctor, Dr. Rodriguez, uh, joined by my co-host, Dr. Pat Davidson. Yep. Today we have a very special guest, and by special, I mean like mentally challenged. Yep. <laughs> Padded walls, water yes, rings, yes. short bus pickup. I like to say mentally advantaged. Okay, yeah. Looking Advantage the window. from yes. what perspective, though? Like, uh, you know, I just think I have a What's a your name, Brian? Can you introduce yourself like a My name is Brian Bea. Uh, I specialize in having the eclectic ideas and thoughts that I like to put out into the universe. And that's why I believe I am advantaged. Thank you. What's, uh, what's your favorite eclectic thought du jour? Uh, eclectic thought of the day. Um, Perfect. Good talk. All right. <laughs> so. Thank you. Uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, how long have you been training? Where did you get started? Uh, how long have you been stalking me and want to be like me? So first I found Marcos on uh, Facebook. It was in 2012. And I thought he had great pecs, so I wanted to be able to find him. I'm just going to stop you right there. Do you smoke cigarettes or is that your normal voice? Uh, I don't smoke cigarettes, but I guess maybe I haven't had enough water in the past hour. <clears throat> Do you have any water for me? Or? No. Anyway. You spit your mouth. Like, so that would be. I'll go first. Marcos will go second. <laughs> I, I like that stuff. <laughs> so uh, to stay on character here, I I have been a coach for what six, seven years now, almost seven years. Uh, I started up around Albany, New York, at a place called Alpen House Fitness uh, with my mentors Rich and Mike Altieri. Um, I learned a lot about strength training, strongman, a little bit of kettlebell work up there. Um, I found my way down to New York City in 2015, and I started at Equinox, and uh, took my strengths to commercial fitness, where I learned a lot about uh, New York and the facets of business, and learned a lot about a lot uh, yeah. moving to New York. Um, and it was a really great environment for me uh, to kind of just really learn more about myself as well amongst this different group of people. And uh, in what was it January this year in 2019 uh, I took my business private and now I'm here yeah. uh, I'm, like it's almost like it all circled around you know I started with uh, the people that are really good in strength and the real shit when it comes to training and then I worked in commercial and I grew my business and a big network and now I'm back to where on even a larger level people know their shit and mm. know the real shit and it's been great yeah I've kind of come full circle too yeah you know going from like you know competing in strength sports, sort of moving down to New York City and being in like a kind of a soft environment really, you know, just like with, like uh, the vibe was set up so that like it didn't encourage people to train hard, it didn't encourage the trainers to like actively be beasts and then like I kind of bounced around after peak shut down and uh, finally made it here and it's been like really just a, a revamp for me personally training wise the people I'm around like it's been really like honestly like my quality of life has improved interesting how you become a better version of yourself when you're surrounded by people and friends or friends I should say who inspire you, you to be your most authentic self we were talking about that yesterday. yeah yeah you know and and I think like at least here this place is this is a fucking crazy place quite honestly hype like but it allows you to be like we're all allowed to be ourselves, right? You know, we really are. Hence, why I'm a doctor of humans. And what are you a doctor of this week, by the way? Oh wait, uh, back to Brian. Um, so you you were a, you competed in strongman. Yes. Uh, and what have you sort of taken from that experience to like lead to what you're currently doing now? Like pros and cons of strongman or whatever it is that that sort of has helped you become a better professional from that experience. Uh. Honestly, the first thing that comes to mind is just a, a lot of effort. And I guess, again, the, the, the biggest thing, especially in this environment of New York City, is that people look at you and they very quickly think, or you see, especially at social media, I just want to train with this guy because he's a savage or whatever people say. So if people see that I can do these crazy things that are superhuman like to them, then that is like the first benefit. Mm -hmm. That is the first benefit because they just, they don't even know what it is, but they're like, that's insane. So I just trust this guy with teaching me how to like put in more effort. So I guess in terms of like being able to 
get in the door to teach people like how to actually um you know train and and, and have like the uh I don't know, just have the lifestyle to actually get on a certain level of health and wellness or fitness. Um, it's honestly just been a good thing to like open that door. Mm -hmm. Simply, right. simply. But for me, it's like, again, it's just taught me a lot about training and like, honestly, training like shit and then learning to train really well, getting injured, coming back from injuries. Um, and learning more about my body. So learning all those faults of my body have gotten me so much better at being able to just teach people how to move. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. And like just learning how to overcome adversity and like give people that concept mentally. Yeah. And, and also like even like, you know, you, I work with a lot of clients and like they'll do something mid set. Let's say they're bench pressing and they hit the J hooks on a, on a rep, like three quarters of the way up. And you can see they, they almost mentally give up. And I know, like, from my experience with competing in strongman, you're going to screw up on almost every single event at some point during the event. And everyone is going to do the same thing. There's very few clean events that you'll have during a show. And you have to push past that. You cannot let that one little glitch be the thing that breaks you. Because one rep in a show can be the difference between winning and coming in the middle of the pack sometimes. So, you know, I am always trying to get on people with like, you know, in the middle of that set, like do not let that thing be the difference maker for you. You gotta refocus, you gotta get past that real quick and you have to learn how to overcome that or, you know, like, and that's something that really does transfer above and beyond just the gym experience, yeah. you know? But you, you brought up social media and that's always kind of a hot topic item. And I see you shaking your head like, what is that term in the fitness industry sort of trigger, Marcos, like, for you? I'm a doctor of triggering today. Oh. <laughs> Getting triggered. Trigger points. Trigger points. Triggering. Hyperbolting and hyperventilating. I was hoping you could trigger me later. I will. Okay. I was working out yesterday. Yeah. And uh, at a gym I don't often go to, and this kid interrupts me mid-set with my fucking headphones on. I'm like, oh boy, here we go. 20 years old. He starts asking me a shit ton of questions. About the podcast? No. I didn't even tell him about the podcast. That being said, nice kid. He was just very honest and just asking for help. So I'm talking to him. And I'm like, hey, what got you into lifting? And he mentions Simeon Panda. Oh, who's yeah. Who's a guy on Instagram who's on more trend below than people that I, I, don't, know. I don't care. I don't fucking know. And I, I laughed. I was like, wow, that's interesting. When I first got into training... I mean, one, it was like fucking almost before the internet, but I was like, so you want to look like that? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, you don't want to look like a better version of yourself? And he was just stumped. And I was like, yeah. Social media just gives, especially millennials, such a skewed perspective on reality. I just, it's demoralizing to me. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, like I sort of use it for the perspective of like business. It's a, it, it is a big chunk of my business that is the reality and I use it very strategically and I'm not really on there that much to like see honestly like that's not my social life it's a it's an avenue for me to to take advantage of in a lot of ways if if I'm being like completely honest like I, I remember having a guy uh, send me a message a guy I know in real life too and he he was like, hey man, are you like upset with me or something? And I was like, why would why would you think that? Like, what are you what are you even talking about? He's like, what well, you know you haven't liked any of my recent posts. And I was like, what? How old was this person? Old enough, but like, you know, I was I was just, I didn't even really know what to say. And I I don't even at first I was like, what's wrong with this guy? And then I, I'm i it's a good question how old he is, but I realized that this is a legitimately social experience for a lot of people. Um, I use it to get anybody riled up, just to trigger people with like emotional connections with exercise, because I think that's a, actually a big problem, quite honestly. Like, if you, if you legitimately feel like I kicked your teddy bear because I questioned whether or not the TRX is valid, like, you gotta take a step back and, and start to actually like evaluate your own like where where are you in this fitness world? Like, you know what I mean? But but that's sort of where the way that I utilize it. But you know, uh, it's hard for me to relate to people 
that are coming into social media with that as, as even a concept. I don't know. Like, but I'm probably the oddball out. I agree. I feel like I'm furthest from social media. You're somewhere down the middle. And then Brian, <laughs> being of the younger generation, you use it well. Yeah, I enjoy, I watch your I enjoy videos, what you do, actually. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't go through my feed that far, but you're in there, and I always enjoy what you do, because I feel like you bring, like, a good sense of humor to it. Like... I don't know. Like, what are your thoughts? I mean, that's just. I don't. I wouldn't even say I use it strategically. I actually just really like. I've always had a big creative side. I've been an artist and a musician for a big portion of my life, so I actually really like to create media. And I just, for me, it's like that outlet where it's like I'm always like having people take videos of me when I'm working out, and I just turn that into like a humorous experience. Mm. Which that's that is the experience essentially that on top of being uh, effective in any other way with my training, it's very, that's, that's my type of training experience with my clients. Yeah. So in a way people use it for business and it's just like people go on there to say like, here's what you do, here's how you squat, here's how you do this. Most of my focus is just like, hey, this is like the experience you'll probably get from me. Mm. Uh, you know, you're, you can expect from me. Yeah. So, but you know, there's something about it that's authentic. And, yeah, and I think that that carries through and probably why it stands out. Because so much of it is just, it's like this, uh, I don't know. I think of like modern music, and I just picture some fat white guy with a cigar in some back room, <laughs> and he's just like, you know, kind of moving things, and he's like, this will mathematically work as a popular song. I'll just plug Justin Timberlake into this, and we'll have these synthesized, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this sounds like such manufactured bullshit. Yeah. Like, why? how can anyone fucking like this? It's so yeah. inauthentic and just, like... Meanwhile, sold out at every concert. Oh, yeah. That may be. Yeah. But, you know, the same thing with social media. You yeah. see some of these yeah. things and it's just like this... It's the same post, basically, 10,000 times. Every different style. It's, you know, it's like, here's this lunge that I'm going to do and there's going to be this infographic on the side and I'm going to have this picture of this anatomy thing and here's the glutes and it's like... Dude, who who wants to see this? Like, is this? But then you look at the number of followers, and you're like, this motherfucker has like three hundred and seventy thousand followers. I guess somebody wants to listen to this or see this. Like, yeah. so, but it's to me, it's just really like off-putting and just kind mm -hmm. of like, why is this something that's popular? Like, but it's hard for me to relate to a lot of that stuff, and that's probably why we're in this back room with this lovely. Uh, what is that? A pussy willow? I think it's actually yeah. This, this has got to be a pussy willow. That's pot nice and soft plant of some sort. You know, it's it's uh, it lo it's looking very healthy too. It doesn't get a lot of sunlight, but that I doesn't stop fake, that thing. But that's a no, it's definitely real. They're they're real. Look at it, like yeah. you know, Luke definitely didn't arrange that himself when it got delivered in the mail. I wonder who bought these things. Or who yeah. thought of them? Who thought yeah. of them? Was it Frank or Luke? It was neither of them. It was the owner's wife. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, that being said, yeah. you know. <laughs> so we built a time machine. You go back, or you died today. You go back 10 years into the past with your current knowledge now. What would you tell your younger self? <sighs> Man, 10 years? Like, what were you doing 10 years 17. Yeah. 17. Like, nothing good was going on. I would have just said... Uh, Stick to music because That's your training tough. sucks. That's tough, man. I don't know, man. Every it, I can't. It, it's one of those things where I wouldn't do it because every I did so much dumb shit. I did like so it's where like I've gotten to the point where I I'm at a really good point where I really believe that everything happens for a reason. As corny as that sounds, I just try to put myself in a state where I always put myself believing that like all right, this can lead to that puzzle. It's fine. I, what the fuck would I say to myself? I was seventeen. Yeah, like, you wouldn't listen. To like that. kick, kick. I was playing soccer at the time. Like fucking kick the ball on the goal. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't fucking know. If you believe it, you can achieve it. <laughs> yeah. right. Would you change anything about your life story? No, I wouldn't. Except I would yeah. probably invest in Google and like play some lottery numbers. <laughs> yeah, I would, do the I would biff. find. I would yeah. find you guys sooner. Hell yeah. That's the point. It's true. Wow. Fans. That's not bad. Us. That's not bad. But I don't know if I would have appreciated you as myself. Oh, you wouldn't know because wow. I would I would play it off like this is our first time meeting. Oh really? You think we're just it's just destined? It probably is, yeah. right? Like <laughs> you know It's the miracle of the universe. I think back like the one thing, the one area would be like if I could have gotten some dental work done in a younger self, I think that would have been really big for me. 
because just knowing what I know now about like biomechanics and things of that nature, I'm like, man, if I could have set myself up with like a young, like with a younger bone structure, more pliable stuff, and just been able to manage an airway better, like my sleep apnea wouldn't be as much of an issue. I'm gonna have to handle this at some point, but it's much more difficult at 40 compared to if it could have happened at you know 12 or something like you that. You would have looked like Chris Hemsworth or something. It would I would have been unstoppable. You're unstoppable. Been and I would have gotten better sleep, which means better recover. I probably would have been a giant. I would have been like five foot eight. You know what I mean? And like shit, like a, a five giant. foot eight version of me. That's unstoppable. It really is. Yeah. It's like a That's five like, foot nine version of Tom Cruise. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Couple like, extra inches yeah. make a big difference, man. No, you know. that would be like T Rex with like elderly people grab her arms added to them. You know what I mean? Be like, Arr, eat you <laughs> up, baby. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. Just getting that time check. You know what I mean? Because this is going to be a special two part edition. Wow. Yeah. You're yeah, going to notice the viewers. You know, it's, it's kind of funny because, uh, you know, we do this. You never know what, what kind of expectations to have from anything. Yeah. But over the weekend, I was teaching a seminar in New Jersey at Mike Baker's place. And I had a number of people come up to me and be like, you know, I'm really enjoying the podcast. Like, it's it's funny the kind of unbelievable crew that we have at our disposal. Uh, with the kind of technical proficiency yes. that we're seeing here. Uh, somehow, some way, this seems to be working. And you guys really do seem to love us, all 12 of you, uh, which is a huge increase from the previous group you of seven. You need new hobbies, you need new friends, you need, probably need to start dating, move out of your grandmother's basement, stop watching this, it's not, it's not productive. Was yeah. there at least seven viewers last time? Uh, actually, yeah. we, I don't know. I, we broke 60 or 70. Did we really? Yeah. Dude, we're, we're, in a way. we're causing change. To be be the wow. change you're trying to see or... Luke usually brings the solid so quotes. Excited. You know what I mean? Like, He's got great analogies, great quotes. He really oh, does. You yeah. know, like we were talking about the importance of grammar and punctuation the other day, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I I was pointing out the difference between helping your uncle Jack off a horse mm -hmm. versus helping your uncle Jack off a horse, yeah. and and just a couple of commas, uh, you know, they go a long way in terms of what yes. that sentence means. And um, and we got into the where the fire. fuck would you get a horse in old the old country? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the Amish country. Yeah, I don't think his name would be Jack. It'd be like Yusuf no, your uncle's fucking... name. Your uncle is Jack. Yeah, I'm aware. Yeah, so if he's in the old country. He's not he's not used to be fucking Jack. It'd people be like have horse. People have horses in the United States. There's there like only the police had horses where you were familiar. Yeah. Okay. But right. in other places, other parts of the country, the red states, for instance, they're going to have humans. How many of your uncles have horses? I have one uncle, and he's a psychi psychiatrist near Boston. Cool. Uh, so Brian, how many of your uncles have a horse? Uh, no uncles. Zero uncles. I have friends that have horses, no uncles. I guess I'm your uncle now. Anyways, yeah. where I was going with Let all of this that. was that it's really important to acknowledge the power of, of family bonds and the degree to which you're willing to give yourself to others. And that's where Luke really stepped up here because we were talking about like, if you actually had to help your uncle jack off a horse, would you, you know? And, and what did you say, Luke? I said, y'all family blood, th no. Family's family, blood or bond. Uh, you point to the horse, I got you. Yeah. That's commitment. Yeah. This young man is ready to tackle this horse immediately and do what needs to be done. So I ask the two of you, yes. are you going to help your uncle jack off a horse? I wouldn't think twice about it. I would get right to it. Yeah. It, the business needs to be taken care of. Marcos, you? Go fuck yourself, man. 